you had all of the seven million dollars for 13 months before Mr. Depp sued you and you chose not to pay it to the charities you pledged it to. Is that I, correct? Ms. I Hart? disagree with your characterization of that. So the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case is still going on. And though I'm not really one to pay attention to tabloid things, my first love is mental health and human behavior. And though I always knew that spirituality was going to be a big part of my practice, I originally thought I was going to be a licensed psychologist. So this is right in my wheelhouse. And uh, I'm sure you've heard the phrase, it take one, takes one to no one. Well, uh, I was once a young girl who um, was quite manipulative and some would even say a sociopath before I uh, went back to being a radical truth teller. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was partly able to do that because I didn't start out a sociopath. So today I want to share with you guys a little bit about what I see in Amber Heard and why it's important to recognize when we're being manipulated, when people aren't being honest, and how you can recognize when people are being manipulative and not honest. Now, first of all, welcome, welcome back to another video. I'm Ann Blackwood, your Silicon Valley sage sister, here to bring consciousness to the forefront of your daily life to make life a little kinder and simpler. Now, this one's gonna delve a little more into mental health health and spirituality today, um, but it'll, it'll be worth your while, let me tell you. <laughs> so, first of all, I wanna show you the full clip of the video I have of what I started this with. Higher house Ms. Heard, at one time. You pay it I'm over not asking, time. Ms. Heard. All right, next question, please. Thank you. That statement isn't true today, as you sit here today, is it? It is true. I pledged the entirety. But you didn't charity. donate it. Unfortunately. You didn't donate it. It's a yes or no. I haven't been able to obligate, I mean, to fulfill those So that's a no, right, Ms. Heard? I, am, I made the pledge. I want to be very clear. I pledged the entirety. I haven't been able to fulfill those pledges because I've been sued. You had all of the $7 million for 13 months before Mr. Depp sued you and you chose not to pay it to the charities you pledged it to. Is that I, correct? Ms. I Hart? disagree with your characterization of that. So first of all, I want to point out the very Hillary Clinton-esque uh, ensemble that's uh, going on here. <laughs> Just thought that was an interesting correlation that, um, what is it, Chinese collar going on on the suit dress, um, trench coat thing she's got going on. Um, very much reminiscent for me of Hillary Clinton when she was running against President Trump. Um, then you also, notice some asymmetrical facial movements when she talks. When you use one side of your face and not the other, when you're talking, it is often a sign of deception alongside other uh, things that they call clusters. But you can see when she answers, she just makes these, I, I, I can't imitate it. Um, <laughs> There you go. You get that, that asymmetrical uh, facial expression. And that alongside some other things because not one single thing can tell you that someone's being deceptive. You know, people say things like scratching your nose or asymmetrical facial expressions are signs of deception, but I'm a big fan of the behavior panel, for instance, and they're one place where they like to remind us all the time that it's not just one single thing that tells you someone is being deceptive. It is usually a cluster of things. Otherwise, there are other places and times where we can use things like asymmetrical uh, facial expression um, or things like scratching our nose. Um, like for instance, having allergies or an itchy nose or a bug just 
went on your nose, which is why context is definitely important when it comes to recognizing things like deception. Um, but the thing that stands out to me most is not necessarily what she says, but how she answers the question. Because she's trying to make a distinction where there is not one to be had. And then she ends it with, I disagree with your characterization. There is no way to disagree with one's characterization. That's how you know this is, apart from the fact that we know from the facts that it's BS, that it is BS because it's a yes or no question. We have the facts presented to us. So that's not something you can disagree with a characterization about. It's not a characterization, it's facts. And something that I like to remind people is there's no such thing as personal truth when it comes to especially things like this. There's your story, there's their story, and then there's the truth, which is usually somewhere in the middle. I'm sure you've heard that before. Reality exists, folks. Like, as spiritual as I am, I like to remind people the hard, cold facts of reality exist. And uh, so there are times where we can't just manifest or manipulate our way out of things. So in this case, she's trying to make it seem like she couldn't do something that she absolutely had the opportunity to do. And answers like this, I disagree with your characterization, or trying to make these distinctions uh, that are false, you know, these are the obvious signs that one is being manipulated because this person is trying to talk you into thinking that the truth isn't reality, but there are absolutely truths in this world. And in the grand scheme of things, often these things we try to make personal truths are, are the farthest from the truth. So I just found this clip very interesting because she's got the asymmetrical facial expressions when she looks at the jury. Um, she looks at the jury constantly now, which I don't remember her doing in the beginning. Uh, like I said, I don't tend to watch things like this, but when it comes to human behavior, I am just fascinated by it. Uh, one of my favorite parts of this trial, because I've watched some of it, was the psychologist that testified on behalf of Johnny Depp's side. Um, I really related to her, the way she talked about things being fascinating. <laughs> really stood out to me because I find human behavior fascinating. And so it's just really interesting where she was willing to use the word fascinating in a courtroom to describe her fascination with human, human behavior. So that, I guess that's all I have to say about the first clip. Let's get to the second one an ongoing negative publicity campaign. It's an orchestrated smear campaign. You have no evidence of that, do you, Ms. Heard? Just look me up, you'll see. So without having to dig around too much, I took all of these out of the same, the same trial day and um, video from Law and Crime, which I'm grateful for them to have these available for us. And, um, the thing that stood out to me the most with this was the solipsism that she expresses when she says, look me up, you'll see. As if everyone has the same perspective. Now, if you don't know what solipsism is, because I didn't before I was introduced to Levain Satanism, <laughs> solipsism is something that we grew out of. We actually learned about it in child psychology because that is when we experience it naturally, is as a kid. Because when we are a kid, we go through this phase of development where we think everybody knows what we know. And um, that's interesting when we see adults that haven't grown out of it in one way or another. Now, she knows that there are things that she knows that other people don't, and that other no pe- Whoa, other no people. <laughs> 
and that other people know things that she doesn't, but she's still holding on to it in the sense of that she assumes everybody has the same perspective she does. And this is something to watch out for in people. When people don't understand that we all hold different perspectives, that is absolutely a sign of lacking in maturation, lacking in lacking in, in, in an adult mindset. It means that this person has not mentally matured uh, past a certain amount of, of solipsism which we are supposed to fully grow out of. We're supposed to understand that people hold different perspectives. Now, whether or not we agree on whether or not that's okay is another story, but understanding that people hold different perspectives is very important to adult life, to, to human life. And so the fact that she thinks an acceptable answer is, look me up, you'll see, because everybody who would possibly see what I've seen would agree with me. You know, that is also a very actually narcissistic point of view. I think narcissism and calling people narcissists is so overused, just like I think the word empath is overused in the spiritual community. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of people who are empathic in that sense because we're human beings who are empathetic to other human beings most of the time. And also there are just a lot of things about the, the human brain, the human mind, and what the eyes pick up and therefore what the brain picks up, what the ears pick up and therefore what the brain picks up that a lot of people just don't understand. We are picking up on cues that we don't even realize we are seeing. Like, I can see something in the corner of my eye right now other than just what I'm looking at. And so if there was movement going on, let's say I'm walking down the street and all of a sudden out of the corner of my eye, I see someone flash what they call a micro expression of anger. You know, I might not even know or notice that I saw that, but all of a sudden I have this bad feeling that I'm not safe and that I need to start walking faster. And these are the kinds of things that people don't realize that we do that are made out to be intuition, which they're not. So we have to be careful, not only as to what we don't realize is science, but we wanna be careful with just labels in general. It just drives me nuts that there are people out there who overuse the term narcissist, especially because narcissist is not a catch all term for people who piss you off. But in this particular case, getting back to the point, it is very narcissistic to assume that everybody's going to share your point of view. So yeah, I guess we'll uh, end this clip on that note and let's get to the last one does that refresh your recollection miss heard that you did in fact in october of 2018 two months before you published the op-ed in this case that's the subject of this case you initiated an arbitration against mr Depp for defamation it's not my understanding i initiated an arbitration i it's my understanding that our lawyers sent a lawyer, I mean, a letter to his lawyers after he called me a liar again, effectively, in an interview. So, getting back into manipulation. The first thing she does that I notice here, she tries to make a distinction without a difference, where she didn't do anything, her lawyers did something, and it wasn't what this lawyer is trying to claim it is. And on top of that, not only is she trying to make a distinction without it, or she's making a distinction without a difference, she's trying to say that they're, these are two different things when they're not, but she's also trying to place the blame, take the blame off of her and project it onto her lawyers. I didn't do this, my lawyers did it. And not only that, but it's not what you're saying it is. And that, both of those 
are clear signs that someone is trying to manipulate you. If you ever hear someone try to argue with you and they're quite literally saying, yes, I did this, but they're just using different words, that is a sign of manipulation. Because when we're that defensive, we're doing something wrong. We're doing something wrong. People who are honest, people who are genuine, people who aren't trying to manipulate you, don't feel the need to make those kinds of distinctions. Don't feel the need to be defensive like that because they've done nothing wrong and they know it. Now, the one exception to this would be a psychopath who doesn't realize that they've done something wrong. So not to throw that term around, but the brain quite literally doesn't know, the person quite literally doesn't know that what they've done is wrong. So you wanna watch out for that. You wanna watch out for people who are saying, no, I didn't do this, I did this, or even though technically what they've said is the exact same thing, or no, I didn't do this, they did this. Because her lawyers did it on her behalf. And trying to place the blame anywhere else when it's your fault, that's a clear sign of manipulation as well. And people who do this aren't going to take responsibility for much of anything that they do. If they honestly didn't do it, or if it honestly wasn't done on their behalf by someone else, it's not like she wasn't involved in it. You know, that that's a big difference. If her lawyers had just up and sent the letter without her knowing, then it would be another story, but they didn't. She knew, she knew. So the idea that she had no involvement in this and her trying to place that blame off on her lawyers when she definitely had knowledge of the fact that it was going on and was most likely heavily involved, at a minimum had a conversation with her lawyers for them to do it on her behalf that is mass, ma mass myth, massive displacement. My brain was trying to, or my mouth was trying to combine those words. That is a massive displacement of blame where at a minimum, they equally hold responsibility, her and her lawyers for the circumstance. So if you find yourself in a position where someone is trying to argue that they didn't do something, even though you can clearly hear that what they are trying to say they did is basically the same thing, watch out, be aware of that. And definitely be aware of people who try to place blame on other people <laughs> when they're to blame, even if it's that they're to blame too. Let's see, is there anything else I wanna share with you guys today on this? I just, I'm just gonna end with this. The fact that it's going on at all, the fact that we've made this okay, the fact that we have set a precedence for having court cases, celebrity or otherwise, on the news, I think is disturbing. I think that this is all one giant distraction from the important things that are going on. I mean, there are a lot of other important things going on right now. And I think even the Roe v. Wade leak is a distraction from the important things that are going on right now. For instance, how many of you heard about the food processing plants? What was it, like 18 of them across the country or something like that, that just miraculously caught on fire? Ah, uh, what else, what else, what else, what else? There was something else that was really important. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. We have our very own Ministry of Truth here in America now. 
they have a disinformation governance board attached to Homeland Security. That is freaking disturbing. We have our very own Ministry of Truth here in America, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to 1984. <laughs> what is this world, what is this country coming to? So they do things like this, have a case like this, that like a car crash, people can't take their eyes off of it. They do things like this, like leak a potential conversation about Roe v. Wade out to distract you from the real things that are going on that deserve your attention. We shouldn't all be focused on Roe v. Wade right now. It was a maybe kind of sort of conversation between two people on the Supreme Court. It wasn't even actually a motion to overturn it. It wasn't, to my knowledge, even a formal letter. It was an informal conversation, to my knowledge. Now, if I'm wrong about that, go ahead and let me know in the comments. I don't want to be speaking falsely. But to my understanding, this was an informal letter between Supreme Court members or maybe even a Supreme Court member and uh, one of their assistants. I'm not sure. I'm gonna be honest about that. But what I do know from everything that I have gathered is that it was an informal letter. It wasn't even formal. So all of these things have people up in arms when we should be really curious as to how we lost that many food processing plants. Let me know if someone knows the actual number down in the comments as well. But we had an enormous amount of food processing plants just up and catch fire. A plane flew into one of them, like all within two or three days. What's that about? We have now a disinformation governance board. Disinformation governance board attached to Homeland Security. Pretty sure that goes against our First Amendment rights. Pretty, pr pretty sure. And oh my goodness, the woman who's leading it, she's bonkers. So just to end this on a high note, don't let people, don't let the news, don't let the media distract you from what's important. Get in, dig in a little bit. Find people. If you don't wanna dig in personally, find people, find sources that will do it for you. That's why I love following the Daily Wire, JP Sears, Awaken with JP, Candace Owens. That way I know that I'm gonna be informed of all the important things that are actually going on in my country because I wasn't one who was very political before two years ago, like at all. I mean, I voted and I made sure to research everyone I voted, but other than that, the rest of the year, I was there the rest of the years, I wasn't political. Those were the only times that I ever did anything involving politics was my bi-yearly voting or bi-yearly, that's twice a year. Um, Oh, sorry, guys. My uh, foot's falling asleep here. Um, I had to move that. My whole leg's asleep. <laughs> anyway, if you don't want to stay totally up on the news yourself, follow someone who does. Like I said, The Daily Wire is a great place. Prager U is a great place. I am so proud to be a Prager Force member for the little while I still can. Because um, I'm, getting, I'm getting old enough that I'm only gonna have a couple years. And uh, I, I didn't join all that long ago. Because again, wasn't very, wasn't very politically uh, aware before now. Uh, but now is the time. Now is the time to be aware of what's really going on. So you too can notice when you are being distracted from the truth. And not only can this go for 
The media, this can be individual people trying to distract you from the truth. So watch your back, find your tribe, find your trusted circle. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for joining me for another video. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody that are my new subscribers. We are so close to that custom URL, I can feel it. <laughs> Actually, speaking of which, I haven't checked in the last day or two as to where we're at on subscribers. I need 100, I need 100 um, to get that custom URL. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to check out all the links in the description. If you're enjoying my videos here, I know you'll enjoy all the links in the description. That includes working with me one-on-one. -on -one. If you're ready to heal, grow, expand your consciousness, end those cycles of suffering in your life, get off that hamster wheel of hurting and healing and hurting and healing and get proactive about your mind, body, and spirit health. I want to help you do that. And uh, we do this by one-on-one, one-on-one work, mind, body, and spirit, because when all the systems are healthy, happiness comes naturally. So what I was gonna say, <laughs> what I meant to start saying there was I have four session packages available and that signs you up for a certain number of sessions and then how often we work together and what we work on is customized, personalized to you. So we can work with each other once a week, every other week, twice a week, depending on how how quickly or or not you want to, to work on the things that we work on together. All of my session packages uh, include Voxer direct messaging so that we can communicate in between sessions. So if you sign up for one of my session packages today, because I do have six spots available, so that is an option, that allows you that number of sessions you sign up for, and then we will do a free session to start off with, to, to customize, personalize, get to know each other, and then we will be off to the races. <clears throat> the other links I have in the description are things like my Patreon. If you're not quite ready for working with me one-on-one, -on -one, Patreon is a great place to start. I have my intuitive lifestyle course there, which is a part of all of the membership tiers that I have available. I also have lots of things like guided meditations, journal exercises, intuitive lifestyle course, as well as my spirituality 101 and spirituality 2.0. I have my meditation series, so much good stuff going on over there. So again, if you're enjoying my videos here, you'll definitely enjoy what I've got to offer over on Patreon. If you would like to get in on any of the free stuff that I do, you've got to be signed up for my mailing list. I only do one email a month. That's it. No more than that, because I don't like to be one of those people who just kind of emails you to remind you I exist. Uh, I hate it when people do that to me. I like being on people's mailing lists, but I hate people who just kind of spam for the sake of like, hey, I, I exist. Uh, so one email a month, that's it. If that and uh, you'll get in on any of the free stuff that I do. I have a Ritualize Your Life workshop coming up here in a week. So check that out. I've got other things in the description as well, like doTERRA, which is your one-stop shop for getting all of those natural living needs in your life. Oh, goodness. doTERRA is so, so good. <sighs> I don't know about you, but I am obsessed with getting rid of all of those synthetic chemical things that were in my life and uh, replacing them with the best purest plant-based things. Plant medicine, plant-based products, natural products, and doTERRA has the best. And I wouldn't say that if I didn't actually know it. So there's that. <laughs> I think there's some other links in the description. Go check them out. And as always, may the energies you serve serve you well. And let's keep making our way through. <laughs>